Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating document migration into Oracle UCM. The Kapow Catalyst Extraction Browser can extract documents and content, including metadata, from files, database systems, websites, digital asset management systems, and CMS servers. The documents and metadata are organized into an intermediate database. Using the Extraction Browser, the documents and folders, including the metadata, can be uploaded directly into Oracle UCM using the website user interface. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the Extraction Browser. I currently have Oracle Content Database loaded in the Extraction Browser. As I interact with the page and click on links, steps are generated in the robot up above. The purpose of this robot is to collect all of the folders, including the attributes, from Content Database, store it into a database so that we can then restore the folders in the exact same structure in UCM. The for each folder step is a loop step that allows us to repeat each of the steps that follow for each folder that's on the page. I can actually click the iterator button and we can see in the visual design environment what will happen at runtime. For each folder, we'll be extracting the attributes from the page. The first value we're going to extract is the name of the folder. When I pass by this step, you'll see the folder name become populated in the data object. So now we have the folder name, we'll extract the folder size the last modified date, the last modified by, the description, and now we're going to set the parent folder into our data object. This is the only attribute that doesn't exist in the website. This is an attribute that we've created here before we started into the loop. We need to keep track of the parent folder so that we can rebuild the folder structure in UCM. Now that we've got all of the information that we need about that folder, we're going to store it into the database, and then the loop is going to bring us to the next folder, and we'll collect all of the information about that folder. In addition, any one of these that's a folder and not a file will be opened and processed in the same way. We'll extract all the attributes of the folders that are within that folder, and then we'll be extracting all of the attributes of the folders that are child folders to those folders. After the robot's completed running, we'll have a database of all the folders that were in CDB, including all of their attributes and all of their parent folders. We can switch to debug mode now and run the robot and watch as all the attributes are extracted from the website. Each of the folder's names, the modified by, the modified date, the description, and the parent folder, which is a value that we're creating so that we can reconstruct the folder structure. The purpose of the second robot is to recreate the same folder structure with all the metadata that we extracted from Content Database and Oracle UCM. We're going to create these folders simply by using the new folder form. We're going to populate the fields here from the same metadata that we put into the database for each folder that we extracted from the content database. We're going to enter the name of the folder, the type of the folder, the security setting, the author, the last modified, the description, and now the parent ID. We have to establish the parent ID and then replace it in the form. This is a hidden value that is usually populated by a browser pop-up field. We establish the parent ID initially here after we set the root folder. We set the root folder to substage. That's the root folder name that we're going to populate all the folders into. Back here at the beginning of the robot, we're going to extract the root folder ID, collection ID equals 193. In UCM, the folder ID is called the collection ID. And here we can see the collection ID equals 193 for our root folder substage. This extract URL step is going to extract that value and use a regular expression to set the 193 folder ID value as the parent folder ID value. We're then going to set that folder ID value back into our database and then we're going to set substage as our global parent folder variable. Now we're going to loop through the database of folders and we're going to find all the folders that are child folders of the current parent folder. Our current parent folder is substage and we're going to loop through each of the folders that belongs directly under substage and add those as folders using the form. So here when we set the parent ID we're going to be setting that to 193 for each of these folders that are child folders of substage. This is done by doing a replace tag. Here's the configuration for the replace tag step. We're taking the current tag that you see selected in the HTML, and we're going to replace it with the same tag except for 
this variable value, which is the attribute folder uh, parent folder ID, which we can see is here, 193. So when I pass this step, that value in the HTML has now been set to 193. When we click the Save button for the form, this folder is going to get created directly under the substage folder. After we've completed that, for all the folders that are child folders of substage, we're going to then reestablish a new parent folder. We're going to repeat the query on the database. We're going to find all the child folders of the new parent folder. We're going to load each of those folders into the data form and add those folders into UCM. We'll continue the process of changing the parent folder and adding all the children folders until all the folders that are in the database have been added into UCM. Let's go to debug mode now and run the robot. Start the robot. So now we can see each of the folders as they're being created. Folder 3, the folder ID that was extracted for folder 3. Folder 1, the folder ID that was extracted for folder 1. Folder 2, and its ID. And all of these are child folders of the parent folder substage with the ID 193. Let me stop the robot for a second and we'll look at what's happening. So the parent folder is set to substage. In this step, we look for all of the child folders. After all the child folders for substage are created, then the all child folders are created flag is set to true for the substage folder. We go back to get the next parent or set of parents from the database. Let's look at that query. We're going to select the folder names from the folder table where folder ID is not null and child folders created is not true. So substage no longer qualifies in the second time when we look for parent folders because all child folders created equals true for the substage folder. So now we're going to be looking for any folders that have a folder ID assigned. And we can see the first three folders that we've just created have a folder ID now. So these become the new parent folders. So we're going to go through a loop of all three of these folders and look for any child folders that belong to these three folders. So we've already started into the loop and we found we have folder three underscore three and for this folder the parent folder is folder three. So now we've already started into the loop where the parent folder has been set to folder three. So we'll continue the robot now. So now parent folder one is the parent folder with folder ID equal to 290. So now each of the folders that are child folders of folder 1 are being created. And at this point, all the folders have the all child folders created equals true flag set. So there are no more parent folders to loop through, and the robot comes to an end. Now that we've copied all the folders from Content Database into UCM, we're ready to go back to Content Database and copy the files. This robot first logs into Content Database, and then it goes to the root folder that we want to migrate and then it begins to loop through all of the elements within the root folder. It's going to then extract all of the attributes for each file. The first extraction step is going to verify whether or not the element is a folder or a file. This is done with the tag finder setting. The tag finder settings look for an attribute named ID in the HTML that ends with the text DOC. By inspecting the HTML down below, we can see that the ID in this HTML does not end with DOC because it's a folder. So when we try to pass this step and extract the file name, Kapow tells us that this step cannot be reached. We'll move to the second element, also a folder, doesn't find the tag. The third element, also a folder, no tag found. The fourth element, it is a file, and here you can see the red box lets us know that the tag finder has found a file based on the configuration here in Tag Finder. So when I pass this step, we extract the file name. That gets set as an attribute here. Here's our name. We're going to extract the file itself. Now, you can either extract the file directly into the database, as I'm doing here, or you can simply extract the URL for the file. And then in a later robot, go through the URLs and download the files to the hard drive. So it can be done either way. In the demonstration, I'm doing both. I'm actually downloading the file into the database here. You can see the image, and I'm getting the URL also. The next attribute to extract is the size. As I click past that step, that's populated into our data object. And then the last modified, the last modified by, the description, and the status. So now we can see our data object is fully populated with all the attributes from the website, and now we're ready to store that into 
the database, and then we'll go back through the loop for any additional files that exist under this folder. Any folders that exist within this folder will be opened up here. This path will be taken if it's not a file. The folder's opened, and each of those folders are looked through for files. Those files are extracted, all of the attributes, and if any folders exist within that folder, those folders are then opened and files are extracted from those folders, and so on until all the files are extracted from the entire folder structure. Let's go to debug mode now. We can see each of the files name, last modified, last modified by, MIME type, the binary for the actual file, the file size, and the URL of the file all are being extracted to the intermediate database. The robot's done running. We can click on any one of the files and see the attributes here down below. The final robot uploads the files into UCM. We log into UCM, we navigate to the content check-in form, and now we query our file database for all of our files. As we pass that step, the first file is loaded into our data object. We have all the attributes for the file here. We're going to then enter those attributes into the form. All the attributes have been entered except for one value, the location of the parent folder. That's the value we're going to be getting from the folder database. So we have a different query step here to query the folder database to get the folder value for the parent folder. As I pass that step, it's populated here in the UCM location. So the parent folder value is 297. Now to enter that into the form, we can't enter it into the actual field. We actually have to do a replace tag. This was meant to be entered by a browser pop-up. We're going to go around that by simply replacing the tag in the HTML with the tag that we want to have in the HTML, which is here. It's the same tag, but with the value substituted in as UCM location, which is the 297 value. So when I check this in, the file is going to be added into UCM under the folder that's marked as folder 297 in UCM. After the file is checked in, we click Check In Similar. That brings us back to the file check-in form, and then we can do the same for the next file. And after we do the file check-in, we're going to set the content ID into the database, and we're going to set the migrated flag equals to yes in the database. This way, we're keeping track of what files have been migrated into UCM. So the process is repeated for each file in the database. We can go to debug mode now and run this for all the files in the database. This demonstration is based on each of the robots running individually. If you're moving massive amounts of files, robots can be run in parallel to increase the speed and the performance. If you have any questions or you would like to see a more in-depth content migration demonstration, please use the information below to contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software.